sound a bit strange, but forgetting is an important part of memory. And information loss occurs at each stage of information processing. Some information is lost early in memory processing due to encoding failures, like failing to pay attention to information or misinterpreting it. Information can also be lost due to the limited capacity of short-term memory, like through proactive or retroactive interference. And even when it passes through the short-term memory bottleneck into long-term memory, forgetting can still occur due to the gradual decay of stored information over time. That said, most forgetting occurs quickly, within about a day of forming memories. Even after a memory has been forgotten, it may not be completely gone. We know this because relearning information typically takes less time than it took to learn it initially. Forgetting is a normal part of life, but sometimes drugs, injuries, or disease can also cause more exaggerated forms of forgetting. For example, if someone is in a car accident and has a traumatic brain injury, this can disrupt their memory for events that happened immediately before or after the accident. When there is an inability to retrieve information that was stored earlier, we refer to it as retrograde amnesia. It typically affects recall of explicit memories for facts and experiences, rather than for procedural memories about how to carry out tasks. In some cases of retrograde amnesia, people are able to recover lost memories. However, memories lost for the time surrounding a brain injury may never have been stored, and thus will never be retrievable. And pterograde amnesia refers to memory loss due to an inability to transfer information from short-term to long-term memory. So whereas in retrograde amnesia, people may have trouble recalling things that happened before, in anterograde amnesia, a person is unable to form new memories, even while previous memories remain intact. Once again, this type of amnesia tends to affect explicit memories. Implicit procedural memories are generally spared. So these individuals can learn new skills, but that said, they may not consciously know that they have learned them. Individuals with anterograde amnesia also often show priming effects, meaning that their behavior can be shaped by experiences of which they have no memory. Memories can be modified or distorted each time that they are retrieved. Even when people accurately remember information, they may forget when, where, or how that information was acquired, a phenomenon called source amnesia. For example, someone might know that Denver is the capital of Colorado, but not remember where they learned that fact. When source memory, the information about where, when, and how, is lost, the retrieved memory may be assigned to the wrong source. Cognitive factors such as priming can also lead to errors in recall. For example, when people view a series of common objects like tables, chairs, umbrellas, and are later shown a new object similar to them, they often falsely identify the new object as one they've seen before. Human memory is also vulnerable to suggestibility, a phenomenon in which misleading information from external sources is incorporated into personal recollections. This can lead to the creation of false memories, recollections that are believed to be true, but are actually contrary to fact. This can be troubling when it comes to therapies that rely on psychoanalytic theories, which emphasize the power of unconscious information and desires. Practitioners of these therapies believe that mental problems can be caused by repression, a mental process in which people remove unwanted thoughts and memories from conscious awareness, and that it is the role of the therapist to bring these memories into consciousness so they can be resolved. However, we now know that the techniques used to recover these memories, like hypnosis or coached interviews, can lead to the creation of false memories, rather than the recovery of true memories that had just been suppressed. Studies have shown that memories recovered in therapy are rarely corroborated by objective evidence. In fact, researchers have demonstrated that it is all too easy to purposefully implant false memories of events that never occurred, such as being lost in the shopping mall as a child. All of this research also calls into question our criminal justice system's reliance on eyewitness testimony. In fact, faulty eyewitness memory turned out to be a contributing factor in more than 75% of the first 250 convictions overturned using DNA evidence. For this reason, certain vital procedures must be followed to reduce eyewitness error. Eyewitnesses should not be shown a photograph of a sole individual and asked whether that individual is the perpetrator. Instead, they should be asked whether the perpetrator appears in an array of photographs of similar looking individuals. Poor police interviewing techniques can also contaminate memories 
and make eyewitness testimony unreliable. Police interviews often include bait questions, questions that mislead people into believing that certain evidence exists when it doesn't. When people are asked these kinds of misleading questions, their memory is significantly less accurate. The effect occurs even when people are warned in advance that some questions may be misleading. An interview technique called the cognitive interview has been shown to improve the accuracy of eyewitness memory. It involves four steps. First, restate the context. Eyewitnesses are asked to think about what the surrounding environment looked like and how they felt during the incident. Then, report everything. Eyewitnesses are asked to report everything that comes to mind, even things that they think may not be important. Then, recall the events in a different order. Eyewitnesses are asked to recall the event from beginning to end, and then in reverse order, and then starting with the part of the incident that left the strongest impression. Lastly, change perspectives. Eyewitnesses are asked to try to describe the incident from the perspectives of others present.